Hello indie game fans, being on the cusp of a new generation of consoles, I wanted to take a look at the best indie games on the best selling console of the generation, the PlayStation 4. Sony has done a wonderful job with excellent first party titles, and on the indie front, PlayStation started off strong before being overtaken by Switch as the indie platform of choice. Since most indies are multi-platform anyway, most of these will be as well, with some additional weightage going to games that my brain associates with the platform. Mark of the Ninja is one of the best stealth games of all time, originally released in 2012, but was recently remastered, which is available on PS4. Playing as a member of an ancient ninja clan, but in the present modern world, this is a classic tale of revenge where PMC attacks the dojo in the opening minutes of the game. There really are just a handful of great stealth games, since it is a tricky genre to master, so play this if you have not, or even if you did, the remaster is totally worth a second playthrough. They are soldiers of freedom. Super Earth is their home. Democracy their creed. They are the Hell Divers. And they need you. Travel the galaxy, visit foreign worlds, and encounter exotic life forms. Modest, noble inhabitants in dire need of liberation. Spread democracy, bring safety, prosperity, and justice throughout the stars. A title that I associated with the early days of the PS4 is Helldivers, remaining exclusively on PlayStation platforms for a little bit and is a co-op, alien, top-down twin-stick shooter which is very challenging but fun with friends. Critical to all of this is Friendly Fire, where you can accidentally kill your teammates, which means that even more cooperation is needed, and it's even more satisfying when you do beat a level. Planet fall and bring democracy to the universe once and for all. Don't wait. Enlist today. One of the best modern 3D platformers is a hat in time, capturing the feel of classics like Banjo, Crash, and even Mario 64. On top of platforming and light combat, this also has the collective spawn gameplay structure and adds in the ability to craft hats, which grants our protagonist new abilities. Wonderfully put together, and it's a must-play game for sure. I have to give special mention to Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, even though it is not that indie, since it was released for free on PlayStation Plus, which has led to it absolutely blowing up and becoming one of the largest gaming stories of 2020. A multiplayer 3D platformer paying tribute to real life game shows like Takeshi's Castle or Wipeout. This has you controlling an adorable, wobbly, clumsy bean character as you try to complete the objective, whether it be a race, a team game, or to survive as long as you can by dodging hazards. It's lighthearted and whimsical, and does have more seasonal content planned for it. Nidhogg 2 is the colourful, squishy follow-up to a 1v1 dueling title, adding a lot more variety in terms of weapons and abilities.
There is an elegance and simplicity to this concept, just two players doing battle in a tug of war style fashion, attempting to advance further for the glory of being eaten by the mythical Norse serpent. still remains one of the best multiplayer titles available and a must get for parties. Developer The Game Bakers really made a splash with the Boss Rush action title Fury, releasing at a time where Boss Rush games were not popular at all. Super challenging bullet hell attack patterns and multiple stages for each boss fight will deliver the crushing weight of defeat to the highs of victory and it just controls as smooth as butter, making for a very satisfying experience. I love roguelites, so it's no wonder that Nuclear Throne makes the list. Coming to us from one of the most prolific indie developers, Flambeer, this has you playing as mutants in a wasteland seeking the Nuclear Throne. But as with most entries, it's not dense on story. <laughs> I actually have a little bit more memory of this being linked to the Vita, together with games like Rogue Legacy and Splunky, but it does remind me of the platform and is another fun entry. The story of No Man's Sky is pretty wild, essentially over-promising and under-delivering at launch, but has steadily been patched and improved into a massive, fantastic experience right now. Anyone who has been following Sony will know Sean Murray and the team at Halo Games, initially a team of four who made a procedurally generated universe comprising of 18 quintillion planets, with the overall objective of getting to the center of the universe. Since launch, the developers have made good on their promises, adding base building, a survival mode, a more comprehensive campaign, more story content and side missions, multiplayer, aquatic biomes, VR support, a new inventory system, changes to the upgrading of your starship, living organic ships, mech suits, added even more flora and fauna, and numerous other features. Its next update, simply titled Next Generation, will bring the visuals to the next level on next generation consoles, but for a title that was picked up by Sony and with its very interesting history, this gets a spot on the list. I see the signs and omens. As the tide rises, we must unite to save Towerfall. The young prince of the desert, blinded by his quest for glory and riches. The Turncloak lurks in the shadows, eager to expose the corrupted king. The elusive thief has returned, trained for vengeance by the Forgotten Master. And I, the last of the Order, must join these adversaries to save Towerfall! Another fantastic local multiplayer title is Towerfall Ascension, where you and three other players do battle in a variety of arenas with a unique bow and arrow mechanic as the central feature, 
where you have to run over to pick up arrows if you miss a shot. I like the pixel art, and if competitive multiplayer is not your thing, this has a co-op campaign as well, and is always fun with friends. The Metroidvania entry Axiom Verge often pops up on the best Metroidvania games videos, so it is no surprise that it makes an appearance here. On the surface, this looks very much like Super Metroid and in many ways it is, but there is a glitchy secret that it hides that is totally worth experiencing, leading to even more variety in the weapons. I love exploration in games and this is one of the best games to do it, so go pick it up if you have not. From Metroidvania to Action Adventure, Hyperlight Drifter is another indie manifestation of an all-time classic, with some of you commenting that it is more Zelda than Zelda. And has you exploring a colourful pixel art apocalypse, searching for a cure. It wordlessly conveys its story, but is notable for how gorgeous it looks, not to mention some pretty challenging combat and interesting progression that is not simply upgrading your HP and damage. Shovel Knight is an indie legend for good reason, having become a titan in the space and is something that many indie developers strive towards. It is an 8-bit action platformer that was inspired by Mega Man, but managed to add its own twist on the formula in many ways. From memorable and unique enemies and bosses, to adding 4 full campaigns with unique characters and mechanics. The treasure trove is tremendous value for money, which will provide hours upon hours of content and I certainly have huge respect for this title and the team. I was just reminded by at Mrs. Dan Asan on Twitter of the existence of Steamworld Dig 2 and have to include it on the list since this is a mining and upgrading metroidvania made by one of my favourite developers, Image and Form Games. This is the perfect example of how to do a sequel right, adding more mechanics and expanding upon the world while retaining its core of what made the first game great. I like the gameplay loop here, where you explore and dig in underground areas, obtaining precious gems and minerals which you can sell for cash, and then to use that to purchase more upgrades. Excellently put together, I cannot wait for what's next from this developer, which is a change of pace with the gunk. Legends tell of an impregnable fortress. And in its depths lies a weapon of immeasurable power. A gun that can kill the past. Enter the Gungeon is one of the best action roguelites of all time, combining a huge variety of weapons, challenging bosses, many playable characters, secrets and more into one of the most polished entries in the genre. I've seen many a streamer play this through their PS4, though personally, I still prefer mouse and keyboard for this, but it's a title that I do associate with the platform. Oh, wow. 
This developer has also put out multiple free content drops post-launch, adding even more to an already great game to another no-brainer inclusion. My 2019 Game of the Year, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, had to get a spot, especially on PS4, since it is in all but name the sequel to Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Ever since the train wreck that is modern Konami forced its best and brightest out of making games, most of these developers have moved on with smaller teams, with one Koji Igarashi helming this project. There's an asterisk attached since it has considerably more resources and leeway than most other indie projects, raising a large sum on Kickstarter and being published by 505 Games. While the 2.5D look does take a little bit to get used to, the writing, gameplay and progression systems of this are on point, with a story that is a little nonsensical but reminiscent of the games of the past. I'm just happy to see this spiritual successor actually being made and released after multiple delays and given how good it is, I'm eager to see what's next. Compared to Bastion, Supergiant's second entry has not found as much success, but Transistor nonetheless is a fantastic game, just a little bit different than what you would expect. While it looks like a Zelda-style action-adventure game on the surface, there's a tactical, strategic layer that allows you to mix and match functions and abilities that is a lot more cerebral. As is iconic of this developer's work, the art, music and gameplay combine perfectly and there's something about the main character Red that screams PlayStation, even though, yes, I know, their colour is blue. A fantastic underappreciated JRPG is Cosmic Star Heroine, inspired by Chrono Trigger and nailing that 16-bit look. It is a sci-fi adventure which you don't see as much of as compared to fantasy, and this does have its share of espionage, corruption, conspiracies, aliens, robots, and more. What I love about this is the battle system which is unique, allowing characters to build hypermeters and requiring you to rotate and combine abilities in interesting ways. With so many fun characters and awesome writing as well, this is not to be missed. Enough has probably been said about Stardew Valley at this point, being an excellent modern farming sim in the vein of games like Harvest Moon. However, there is a wonderful and inspirational developer story behind this of how one man's struggle led to great success, and even to this day, it has a huge loyal community, a ton of mods on PC, and even more content patches to come.
This is one of my all-time favorite indies, although I personally prefer it on PC, but the console version isn't bad and totally worth a play. Salt and Sanctuary is the best game to do, a 2D Souls-like game to date, with all the usual equivalents for Souls, Bonfires and so on. There are a large variety of character classes, a mini version of Path of Exile's skill tree, and a wonderfully horrific and oppressive mood and atmosphere. While it might look a little dated, having been released in 2016, gameplay is king and this does it very well. As I've mentioned, exploration and a sense of wonder about the world is what I love in games, with this title being one of the best at it. A wonderfully innovative title is the Pinballvania Yoku's Island Express, another overlooked title that more people should play. This has you playing as a dung beetle postman who has newly assumed its role on Mokumana Island where something monstrous is stirring and you must do what you can to save the ancient deity of the island. The way that the pinball tables are integrated into the island is very well done, with a large variety of biomes, shortcuts to unlock, and even an upgrade system that allows you to access new areas. What this developer did with the game is nothing short of amazing, and another developer which I'm keeping an eye on for news of their next project. Developer Dreambox Studios is perhaps as close as you can get to a Sony second party studio, with some of their titles like Severed being a Vita exclusive for a period of time, and the Mexican theme Guacamele 2 is their latest. This is the sequel to the first game from 2013 and has a dimension swapping metroidvania brawler which is excellent and I love it due to the theme. It controls very well with some gorgeous environments and an insane time and dimension hopping story and is recommended for fans of the genre. The most recent title on this list is Spelunky 2, the sequel to a game that has been described as many as perfect but somehow manages to iterate and improve upon that. This is a very punishing roguelike platformer where you are exploring the moon searching for your parents. It is as challenging as the first game, where a series of unlikely events can quickly kill you and there are instant death traps like spikes or lava. However, this is an excellent example of emergent storytelling that can occur in roguelites of how everything in the game interacts with each other and will be another classic for years to come. Another roguelike platformer that has really taken off is Dead Cells, 
combining very fluid combat and movement with the compelling gameplay loop of obtaining cells to get upgrades. This tool has become massively popular due to how great it feels to play, and in the months since launch, this developer has spun off another team to work full-time on it, with a number of updates both free and paid adding more content, which makes me excited to see the future of this game and the team. No list talking about indie games will be complete without mentioning Hollow Knight, with the Void Heart edition on consoles being the edition to play. This compiled together all of the previously released free DLC, and is a moody metroidvania with an excellent sense of world building. The story, much like Dark Souls, is told in a cryptic manner, resulting in the usual lot of lore videos and explainers on YouTube, but for being the current best indie metroidvania, it gets a high spot. And the title that perhaps is most representative of the PS4 to me is Celeste, a challenging splatformer about literally and figuratively climbing a mountain and overcoming hardship. The PlayStation brand is as much about the quieter, more emotional entries, together with the drama and action of the first party titles, and this game delivers on the former. It is a Super Meat Boy style game which is challenging on its own, even more so with the optional strawberry collectibles, but it does also have accessibility options that allows you to adjust the difficulty without any judgement. The B and C side variants on the levels present even more of a challenge, so there is truly something for everyone with this, taking the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.